Okay, a quick video today just going over some news that happened recently within the scene that I think is pretty interesting. I think a lot of people won't have even realized that it happened unless you really follow some niche uh, sites and uh, click on every single link that I retweet. Um, but it's a guy called Eden Foley who I know because uh, he's part of the crew that hung around with the Winston's Lab guys and analyzed statistics behind the scene and talked about kind of modeling Overwatch and the best ways of doing it and the best ways of using statistics and valid ways of using statistics. I think he works in data analysis on his day-to-day -day job, so he really knows what he's talking about in terms of how to use statistics and model things effectively and what is a reasonable assessment to make out of a bunch of stats and what is just reading into the numbers too much or applying you know too much context to too little statistic. Um, so a very smart guy in that in that sense and he uh, and winston's lab runs a prediction contest i ran it for contenders also ran it for overwatch league season one is planning to run it for overwatch league season two and it doesn't quite work in the way that you might imagine for prediction contests it's not like say the first the ma first match of the game uh, the first match of the season for 2019 is philadelphia against london it doesn't say just pick a team it says what do you think is the percentage chance that london is going to win and then obviously the remaining percentage is the chance that philadelphia are going to win um and that's a really cool way of doing it i think because it models more how reality works right it isn't just always the case that the better team wins even in a case where you think london have a large advantage you can put a percentage on that if you imagine that it ran you know a hundred times how many times do you think that that one team would win how many times do you think the other team would win what's their percentage chance of winning it's a really cool way of modeling it and then they output it into an apo which is average probability out something like that I, anyway i'll go through the entire thing later on but the idea is this guy eden foley has actually created a model which he's calling the bench model um and it's a computer algorithm that adjusts itself over the course of the season and tries to make predictions based on uh, previous results and based slightly on community power rankings to make sure that if some massive change happens within a team it isn't caught off guard for a couple of weeks so it has some slight tweaking with it there as well so i'll run you through the article let me just grab it up i think this should work yeah look at that wow incredible okay so uh, this is the article that he wrote on it, thebenchmob.com, which is run by fantastic uh, Benchmob, who's done uh, excellent journalism work throughout the Overwatch scene since he got involved with it. And Eden Foley's written an article here. Does it say? Yeah, by Eden Foley at the top right here. Um, and so before I actually click on it and show you how this works, oh, we've been disconnected from the server, but that doesn't matter. I'll show you that later. Uh, he describes a little bit about how it works. So it's a Bayesian process that weights together millions of potential Overwatch League seasons. So th this is nuts to me. I don't even fully understand how it works myself. But the idea is roughly that by modeling out many, 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 many different ways that an Overwatch League season could run um, and discarding the crazy ones where, you know, loads of teams go undefeated and loads of teams go uh, winless and stuff like that, um, they can he can find ones that are more reasonable and then uh, have it model and iterate on itself based on results throughout the season. Okay, so there's some nut stuff here where he talks about the idea of human modeling. So as humans, we're considering many, many different... Uh, say when we get to the playoffs, right? And it, there's seven teams that could still make the playoffs and we're trying to model all the different ways that teams could be able to make it in and we apply percentages in our head to what we think the results of different teams would be but if you actually just think about win loss win loss in like a one and zero there are crazy amounts of uh of potential ways that an overwatch league season could play out so look at this at any given time in 2018 there were 479 million potential rankings every day for the teams and as he says multiply this throughout the season it becomes an incalculable number so it's not like humans and computers can really put weightings on all of these different universes but certainly humans have more uh, tendency towards biases rather than computers who can really just look at what the previous evidence has been and try and apply that uh, going onwards as long as you have an algorithm that actually works fairly successfully so um the idea of his stuff in Overwatch League Season 1 was to see whether it even worked. So here he talks a little bit about selected power rankings as well. As I was saying, um, the idea of it is that if, say, uh, 
Shanghai Dragons halfway through the season, they completely changed their roster and it looks a lot better and people have them higher in the power rankings. But the previous evidence would not have anything to suggest that because it's not based on prior evidence. It's based on evidence that happened in contenders and the fact that we really highly rate these players, etc. So um, it allows itself to be altered slightly by the by the whim of the masses um, to to allow for strange changes like this. So here's how he actually measures whether things are working correctly. And this average probability observed is really interesting. So I think now it would be a good time to actually look at how the algorithm works and, uh, and see. So here's what it looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. This is the app that he's got running. This is actually the predictions for the first few games of the season, I think. Uh, so you can see here, season two, stage one, week one, and this is what it's got at the moment. But at the moment, it's not basing it on season one results. Uh, because there's been so many shifts in the off season, he said maybe he'll add that in for future seasons. At the moment, it's kind of starting on a base base level again, as it did for season one. So that I I'm I believe I'm correct in saying that the tweaks you see here from fifty fifty. I mean, fifty fifty would be just flipping a coin, right? Anybody without any knowledge of the scene could, in theory, just get a fifty percent just by flipping a coin and go by what the coin says, or by picking randomly, you know, between two of the teams, just pick everyone on the left hand side or whatever. Um, so I think the alterations here from 50-50, which is what you would expect if the uh, if the bench model had no evidence to work on, I think this is based on the rankings, the power rankings that he's drawing from. So stuff like the competitive Overwatch power rankings, Benchmob himself does a power ranking, um, and that's different from my power rankings because those are not based on a week-to-week -week basis. Those are based on what I see at the end of the season. So it, you can see now why definitions for power rankings are actually really important when you think about stuff like this. Um, so here you can see, for example, in the aggregate of power rankings has Hangzhou or Spark uh, slightly ahead of the Shanghai Dragons, has London slightly ahead of Philly, and it has New York quite considerably ahead of Boston. So this matches up with the idea that I have in my head of it's pretty much based on where teams are in the power rankings for now. But it should adjust based on the evidence of matches as things get further and further along. And so let's have a look at the model diagnostics where he um, talks about the... Uh, the definitions for some of the important ways of seeing whether or not this model actually works. Um, and basically there, he goes through what ab average probability obse observed is. And the point of it is that if you get a score that is 0.5, that basically means that the model is exactly the same as if you were to flip a coin. So it, he's adding up and doing calculations and making sure that they map out to an average of if you just flip the coin and then anything higher than 0.5 indicates that you are um, having a more accurate result than if you were just doing it at random. Obviously, it's possible for people to be worse than random. Like you might apply models in your head that are incorrect to the point where it would make you way worse than random. But if you were just picking randomly, you would expect it to be around somewhere around 0.5. So last season, I think the, the model scored better than any human that's the first thing to say so he's basing it off this winston's lab stuff so if you go to winstonslab.com and go to fantasy and then you go down to this one overwatch league stage one predictions uh, obviously there was one last season as well and then you go into predict it and you do the same thing right this thing that i was talking about before where you put in a percentage chance and let me see if i can look at the standings i don't think the standings are going to say anything they're all just going to say one right at the moment because nobody's actually there's no evidence to suggest that anybody's got anything wrong so it just sets them at one to begin with but you you would see that roughly the humans were sat somewhere around like 0.5 pretty much nobody no in fact at the end of the season nobody had got above 0.6 he says that here 0.6 seemed to be a boundary that was very difficult to cross for any analyst which equates to accurately predicting every match as an 80 20 event so if you predict something more strongly if if say you predicted something with a 90 percent possibility and it came true it gives you more points right more more credit than if you predicted it at 55% and it came true. Because it's saying you had more confidence in this and you were correct, therefore you know what the hell you're talking about, right? So that's how it moves this 0.5 figure up and down. And obviously, if you say there's a 90% chance of this happening and it doesn't happen, it hits that 10% chance, which could be valid, could be invalid. You may have got the correct weighting of probability and it just it was just really unlucky or you may have completely got the probabilities wrong but it detracts a large amount from your apo average probability observed um and so 0.6 even though it might not seem very much it's only one 
tenth of a percentage point above flipping a coin randomly, it means that you would accurately predict every single match with a fairly high uh, or fairly low margin of error. That's what I mean. Like you would have 80% confidence in every single game going how you thought it went. And that's what's required for a 0.6. So you can see that anything above 0.6 would be crazy difficult for a human being to be able to predict. If you've ever done a contest like this before, and I did one for contenders, I didn't take part in Overwatch League season one, uh, it was difficult. I don't know what my APO was like for that season. I think it was like something like 0 0.57, 0 0.58. Um, I ended up being the most successful person at predicting that, uh, that um season of contenders when i was doing the broadcast what was it contender season zero or something um and eden was the best human at predicting overwatch league season one and eden's bot was better than eden and all other humans at predicting overwatch league season one so it's really interesting what they're able to do for overwatch league season two um so then he goes into uh the uh distribution percentile of apo uh distribution um which is more technical stuff okay here as well he says in season one the apo overall was 0 0.8 uh 5876 for the uh for the bot right and he and eden won with a final season apo of 0 0.5795 so you can see here that the humans can get pretty close to 0.58 it seems i think that was somewhere around where i was but it's very difficult to accurately predict higher than that and it seems like by ignoring the biases that we have and the rumors that we hear and the the noise in the signal that eden has potentially created a model that could still be improved on which is able to predict games to a higher accuracy than we can which is really awesome for being able to look back on the season and be able to see like where the big upsets happened even according to the the best evidence that we had available it's just i think it's a really awesome way of being able to use statistics so you can challenge this bot as well this bot is going to be making predictions in here in this uh competition on winston's lab so i think i'm going to try and take it on i didn't commit to doing it in overwatch league season one it is difficult for me because i'm like getting ready to actually uh be on broadcast when these uh when these percentages have to be typed in they're they're live right up until the game actually begins but as soon as the game begins obviously you can't alter them at that point so i frequently forgot to enter stuff and ended up just dropping out in the in stage one because i found it uh too time consuming but i think i'm gonna really try and tackle it this season to see first of all whether i can um, be at the top of one of these rankings like this i think there was two guys uh really that were like consistently at the top there was eden and a guy called like jrjr or something i've no idea who he is but if you're watching this video shout out to you my dude you were actually sick at being able to predict things and i feel like i've got a good grasp on how to do those predictions as well so i'd be very interested to see whether that's just ego or whether i actually can do that for overwatch league season two and there's a lot of unpredictability eight new expansion teams i'm expecting stuff to be crazy at the beginning of the season but it tends to even itself out over time as you would expect with humans and the same applies to the bot as well because it gets that data and it's able to iterate on itself so if you want to challenge it then you can go to winstonslab.com slash fantasy you just click that thing at the top i'll do it again for you you go to the fantasy and then you go down to overwatch league stage one predictions and click predict it when it gets to stage two obviously you have to go to overwatch league stage two predictions and click predict it and you want to be typing in your results so i think london's got like a eh, i reckon like a 55 percent chance and that means philadelphia has a 45 percent chance something like that i think new york have like uh and eh, probably like an 80 percent chance of being able to take it over boston um so you can see here right like even if i put in 55 percent for one game that puts me not on track for getting 0.6 overall but who knows man it's just too difficult to call at some point um so yeah if you want to take part i think that'll be really interesting take a look at this article i think it's crazy interesting what they've been able to do with it uh and we'll see whether it's the bots on the desk or the bots in the chat or it's the actual bots themselves that are able to come away with the victory in terms of predicting this season